please join me in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, we gather together as a community in solemn remembrance of those who have died in service to country and to community. We seek to recall to memory the lives of these women and men created in your image so that their lives will not be forgotten. We gather to lift up the families of the fallen, those who live with the loss of loved ones, asking that they would find peace and healing. We gather to remember those persons whose service to country and community has left them injured, disabled, experiencing mental distress, and even a loss of faith. May they find healing of body and mind and spirit. We gather to remember all our loved ones who have died, remembering husbands, wives, children, parents. May we find solace in calling to mind their legacies. We gather to lift up all of those who grieve, asking that your comforting presence will be with them. We lift up these prayers in the hope that peace will one day prevail in our world. We look forward to a time when, as the prophet Isaiah promised, the lion and the lamb will lie down together in peace. Even as we honor those who have died and those whose lives have been irreparably altered because of war and violence, we ask that you give us the courage to pursue the path of peace so that young women and men will no longer be put in harm's way. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America. And to the Republic. And to the Republic. For which it stands. For which it stands. One nation. Under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. With liberty and justice. With liberty and justice for all. For all. For all. For all. For all. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. That mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard among the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. I'd like to introduce Bridget Police Chief Melanthon. He will read the names of the people that passed away in the last year. Chief Melanthon. From World War II, served in the Army, Edward J. Michael, Joseph A. Botero, Joseph J. Cook, Howard P. Neiman, Navy, Alfred J. Lavalley, Sr. Adam Joseph Rice, Attilio Pizzoferrato, Marines, Clifford Primus, Polish Army veteran Henrik Rosel, 
Coast Guard Navy, Charles H. Sanders. From Korea, Army, Marshall T. Keyes. Melvin H. Zeiser. John Kissel. Marvin Edward Jones. Daniel, a.k.a. Dennis J. Burke. Donald James Wynn. James P. Tucker, Jr. Norman Parr. From the Navy, Elizabeth B. Jansen. Air Force, Walter Wilfred Legassi. John Calvin Pickens. Dominic Dogowitz. Richard L. Graves. Served in Vietnam from the Army. Frederick Prass II. Russell Lee McKnight. Stephen P. Eukers. Gerald A. Martin. Raymond J. Kuchis. Dwight Lamont Lee. James David Daigle. Curtis Smith. Roberto Colon Sr. Peter J. O'Mara. Navy, Richard Stedman Stores Jr. Patricio Diaz Jr. Air Force, David Gill Drapeau. Peter J. Santos. Marines, Sebastian Anthony Restucci. Richard Hogan. From the Persian Gulf, Army, Craig R. Rosen. Peacetime, Army, John George Pavlik Sr. John P. Hunt. Ruben Louis Robledo. National Guard, Patsy Joseph Tyne. Raymond F. Shaber. Michael A. Cellini. time it is my pleasure to introduce the parade marshal Reynold Hoover a former three-star general of the army the deputy commander US command General Hoover attended Windsor High and is a Windsor resident his father served on the town council his amazing military career is on the Windsor Public website. 
We invite you to read his bio. It is quite interesting. General Hoover cannot be with us today, but he will be here the next Memorial Day. But he graciously sent us a pre-recorded message from his home in Maryland. I now introduce General Hoover. Hello, and thank you, Mayor Trinks, for allowing me to be this year's 2020 Windsor Grand Marshal for the Memorial Day ceremony, virtually. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to be able to share with my hometown of Windsor uh, this great day to recognize and remember the veterans of Windsor who served and sacrificed for our nation. Thank you as well to the Carmen family and all those who have dedicated themselves day in and day out to make the Windsor Memorial Cemetery, Veterans Memorial Cemetery what it is today and to make this great tradition of the Memorial Day ceremony and parade what it is in Windsor. When I think back of Memorial Day and its origins when it was called Decoration Day in the days following the Civil War, it was a time to remember those service members who gave their life in defense of our nation and fighting for freedom. When I think back, I'm also reminded of some 40 plus years ago when I was a part of the Memorial Day ceremonies at Windsor, when I gave the Gettysburg Address. Of course, back then I wore a different uniform, the uniform of a Boy Scout from Troop 149. Today, as an Army retiree, I wear a different uniform, and although it probably doesn't fit as well as it should, I am just as proud to be a part of my hometown to remember the service and sacrifice of others. Others, like Seaman First Class Al LaValle, who saw service in the Pacific in World War II, who was my scoutmaster at Troop 149, and who helped pin on my Eagle Scout when I made an Eagle Scout at the Troop. Others like my grandfather, Nick Trevino, who was a chief shipfitter, who immigrated from Italy to the United States, became a naturalized U.S. citizen and volunteered for service in World War II. And there are many others, about 1,500 in all in the cemetery that we are at today, each with their own story. And although the nature of war and conflicts has changed since uh, George Carter and Alfred Abel, who are in Section 1, and who saw service in the Spanish-American War. Their shared sacrifices and devotion to duty bind them together on this great hallowed ground in Windsor, Connecticut. And it is for that that we are eternally grateful to them and all the veterans who have served and sacrificed on behalf of our nation. They're all here, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, sisters and brothers. Their memories, their story are all here. And as President Lincoln said in his Gettysburg Address, it is for us the living to dedicate ourselves to the unfinished work of preserving freedom. And these people gave their last full measure of devotion. And so today on this Memorial Day, unlike any other Memorial Day where we're in such difficult times, I ask that we gather together and rededicate ourselves to freedom. Rededicate ourselves to sharing the values of our nation. And rededicate ourselves to spreading the values of respect and dignity. Respect and dignity on every street corner. Respect and dignity in every neighborhood, in every community, in every city and town around our nation and around the world respect and dignity at every level. We owe those who are here in this cemetery in Windsor and cemeteries like it around the world, nothing less. So thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of this year's ceremony. I so look forward to being next year's Grand Marshal for Windsor's uh, Memorial Day Ceremony 2021. And thank you again to Mayor Trinks for allowing me this great honor. I look forward to seeing you all next year. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. 
we are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have, be we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this, but in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note, nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that the government of the people by the, by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth. To conclude our Memorial Day observance, I would like to pay tribute to our medical responders, doctors, nurses, home aides, nurses aides, ambulance attendants, police, fire, all those that serve us and keep us healthy. They're facing an invisible enemy. It neither sleeps, wears a uniform, or carries a flag. But we thank them for protecting us and keeping us safe during this perilous time. Thank you for coming. Hear this benediction and words of blessing. May the truth that makes us free, the hope that never dies, and the love that casts out fear lead us forward together till the day spring breaks and the shadows flee away. The peace of God that passes all understanding, the peace which the world can neither give nor take away, abide with you to bless you this day and even forevermore. Peace, pacham, shalom, assalamu alaikum, amen.